We can't show you what the new Hyundai Veloster N is much like to drive yet, but we now have sampled its more symmetrical Ford or sibling, the Europe Market i30N. It is both first product from Hyundai's N performance division and also a preview in the mechanical package that buyers within the United States get each year in the hotter, three-door Veloster. High's raw front tow drive character, eager chassis, turbo boost packs a huge punch. Lowe's stupefying quantity of driver train settings, plentiful engine and road noise, some talks dear. The great configurator the omens are perfect for anyone awaiting an old-fashioned performance hatchback, one who doesn't leaven its excitement with the excessive character-sapping refinement. Although its thrills are amusingly basic, the i30N offers an almost unprecedented volume of user adjustability. On its tire are two modest selection buttons. The left one gives usage of normal, sport, and eco modes, the last ones we doubt that people who own a 271 horsepower hot hatch will select often. The button about the right wears an N logo and can dial up both an ultra aggressive, track focused N mode along with a driver tweakable N custom setting. The latter allows the central touch screen to use to select different quantities of aggression for most on the car's dynamic systems. There's engine mapping normal, sport, sport plus, roof matching throttle blipping off, normal, sport, sport plus, adjustable dampers normal, sport, sport plus, steering weight normal, sport, sport plus, and stability control normal, sport, off. The more powerful performance package equipped version we drove also presented adjustments because of its electronically controlled limit slip differential normal, sport and adjustable exhaust normal, sport, sport plus. According to our venerable Texas Instruments TI-85, that's a good total of 1944 possible dynamic configurations, in the event you count off as being a setting. Many race cars are less adjustable. Lovable thug while searching for the perfect combination could be never-ending, that won't not diminish the enjoyment of a rapid, unpretentious performance hatchback. The European i30 hatch is effectively our Elan to GT, and much on the i30N's hardware is equivalent to that inside upcoming Veloster N. Both cars share a turbocharged version from the company's 2.0-liter and Linfa, a member in the Theta engine family, two power outputs can be found both splitting the real difference between the Volkswagen GTI and Golf are the standard i30N has 247 horsepower as the i30N performance version has 271, the brawnier model also gaining 19-inch wheels instead from the standard 18s, fractionally bigger brakes, along with the aforementioned electronically controlled limit slip differential and active variable exhaust system. The only transmission option for now is usually a six-speed manual, and, much like the 306-horsepower Honda Civic Type, performance is delivered from the front wheels only. The engine features a thuggish quality that fits the car well. Boost arrives late and hard, its slow refinement checking out a full-blooded surge having a pulse-picking suddenness. Hyundai claims exactly the same peak torque production of 279 lbft at 1750 revolutions per minute for their regular and performance models, by using an overboost function for about 18 seconds during a period. Short of attempting to climb an extended, steep hill, it could be hard to encounter that limit. The soundtrack is deep-throated despite the presence of the exhaust trolling around in its quietest mode and approaches antisocial when revved together with the exhaust in the loudest setting. The engine spins freely to its 6,000 revolutions per minute horsepower peak and continues slightly less willingly for the rev limit 750 revolutions per minute later. Sequential upshift LEDs are included in the top with the instrument cluster to encourage harder applications of stick. While the limit slip differential helps the i30N find impressive traction, there's still some torque steer at low revs. But it's with the exciting as an alternative to wayward variety. The engine does sense that it's spinning a hefty flywheel, also it holds on to its revs being a miser once the throttle is lifted, so downshifts should be turned carefully. In top gear the engine is turning just 2100 revolutions per minute at 60 miles per hour. An issue where throttle inputs are met with much lag. Thankfully, 
Downshifting is really a joy, because the shift action is accurate and nicely weighted. Ride quality is firm in spite of the dampers of their more pliant settings, and speeds over anything apart from perfect surfaces produce plenty of road noise to add towards the engine's always present rumble. The stereo audio also is afflicted with a tinny tone and struggles for making itself heard during even moderately enthusiastic driving. At higher speeds and cornering loads, the chassis proves itself to become well disciplined, resisting roll and fighting not easy to prevent bumps from throwing your vehicle off a chosen line. The steering is extremely good, although, as is often the case with electrical assistance, it feels most natural rolling around in its mellowest setting. The end mode is just too harsh for street shoes, but myriad customization options mean it needs to be possible to discover a sweet location for both conditions and driver preference. It's honest, while the i30N isn't one in the quickest cars rolling around in its swift segment, it will score high within the front tow drive criteria that individuals figure is really a better measure of your performance car than tenths of any second or G-forces. The chassis offers respectable grip, even around the greasy British roads where we drove it, but more vital is the balance involving the adhesion generated by each axle. Traction is keen and also the limit slip differential helps top end set up a spirited defense against understeer, yet if the i30N does begin to nudge wide it appears back into line obediently in reaction to an eased throttle. Turn in harder and select the soundness controls sport mode as well as the system will allow a liberal number of rear and brake away before stepping straight into restore order. The i30N is usually a solid first effort by high and Eisen division as well as a validation on the company's decision to recruit former BMW M boss Albert Biermann to move it up. The N is definitely an unpretentious machine for traveling quickly and getting fun. In this it is usually a perfect reflection with the humble values of their parent brand. In Europe, it's priced below the most basic Volkswagen GTI Ford or despite offering more performance. Let's hope the Veloster N builds within the same great work.